Okay, I'm going to be doing a deck walkthrough of the Tinker Dam Tarot. Tinker's Dam Tarot. It's the revised second edition from Duck Soup Productions. Beautiful um, matte finish box. This book came, this deck came out, I think, a few years ago, a couple years ago, anyways. And it uh, now, it, it did very well, I believe, as far as. Uh, I got a lot of, uh, I think a lot of people purchased the deck and I got a lot of reviews. And then uh, it was, uh, a second edition was uh, put out and this is the revised second edition. A few of the cards were changed. And I got this, I, I, for some reason I was notified that it was on sale. I got it for like $25, so it was really inexpensive. And the back it says, dark, beautiful, and eerily emblematic of the earliest early 20th century with its own unique symbology and cranky steam age soul. So it's a steampunk uh, type deck. Now when I purchased the deck I um, I was kind of not sure what I wanted to do with the borders and the, the, here's the book. Uh, so I I was vacillating about the borders and, it, and what I ended up doing was I ended up um, cutting the borders. Uh, the reason why I wasn't sure, but the borders are actually quite nice. Uh, they're very similar to what's, what was around here, but there was some variability in the borders and two of the borders were decidedly blue. They weren't this, uh, this darker color. And uh, it wasn't a huge thing, but when you turn the deck over, or this way, you could see different cards. They weren't all the same. So then I decided to cut it down and I did cut it down which was great. Um, and then I, at the minute I cut one of them down, I said, oh, I'm not sure if this was the right thing to do. But when I, um, when I uh, put the border on, I really, I really like the deck. So these are with the borders. This is um, a Krylon, they call it Krylon Copper Leaf Pen. Um, it's, it's, it really can last a long time. I think this is my fifth deck that I've, um, that I have done the edging on, and it's lasting quite well. I'm thinking of going over a little bit more to make it a little bit more even. So I just mixed up the deck without even realizing it. I put it all together, and now it's all mixed up. <laughs> That's not good. I'm going to take a little break. Okay, we're back. Back in business. Uh, so these are great cards. I really like them. They're steampunk style. Um, I do have a steampunk deck mass production. This is a more of a, uh, it's, this is produced by the creator. And I like this one better. I think it's, it's cooler. What I also like, there's a lot of neat things about it. I think the book is very good. It's a very, very little white book, but it, I like the, uh, what it says for a lot of the, um, especially the majors, uh, the major arcana. So we'll, we'll go through over that a little bit. So, uh, I put them in two piles because they're pretty slippery. And we'll just go through them. This is the Major Arcana, and this is uh, Zeitgeist, and he's the fool. Uh, so he's, he is the spirit of the times, and uh, I think that certainly reflects uh, the steampunk era. It's got the airplane up there, and uh, just the, it's just in this Mr. M Munch, Mr. Munch there. Um, the Magician. The High Priestess is called Minerva. Now, uh, I didn't know anything about Minerva until I, I looked it up online to see who, who Minerva was. I mean, I, I realized she was some kind of god of some kind, but I wasn't sure. And she turns out to be a, a, a Roman god, a Roman goddess, and she was of, of wisdom and purity. And they also, there's some war connection as well, but uh, specifically wisdom and purity. She has oftentimes seen with the the Minerva of of the goddess is often seen with an owl or an olive, an olive branch and a snake, but here we see her in her robes. So that's the high priestess. Actress. Now this is the um, this is the empress, and that's that's kind of interesting. I was a little confused about that, but it talks about creativity and someone becoming something. I think that was what I know. Critique, critique. 
the creativity was one of the key words. And the other key word was, there was another interesting key word, um, potential. Not sure about that, but that's uh, certainly creativity. Businessman would be the emperor. The librarian, now that's an interesting uh, selection for the Hierophant. And it's said that it is uh, a, a person, a personage of tradition and of hardcore wisdom, of learning. So that fits it very well. Someone who, who learns, who's studious, and someone who's also uh, committed, is part of tradition. So that is actually kind of a cool Hierophant. Here we have the lover's card is evolution. And uh, it's described in the book as choice and future, future affairs and the suppression of ego. So I thought that was kind of interesting, the suppression of ego. You know, uh, maybe not thinking about yourself so much, but thinking about something outside yourself and falling in love with something, not yourself, but something outside of yourself. So I thought that was a, an interesting take. Then we have the lovers here, and then we have the, the angels and another person with their arms spread out. That's kind of cool. Engine is a locomotive. That's for the chariot. So these cards are great. They're a little different, you know, but they're, they're very apropos, the a traditional tarot in many ways. Equanimity. Balance and clarity of mind. Love this, uh, this card. This is the hermit card, the seeker. You know, it's, uh, I'm not sure about the flag, but I mean, it's appropriate probably for the times. It's sitting on the moon. I thought that was really a, a clever hermit. The Wheel of Fortune, Fate. Fortitude. And it just describes it as um, spiritual uh, courage and feminine power. There's a statue here, and there's the lemon scot there, the lady with the sword. You don't see an animal here, but that's uh, cool. Uh, suspension is the hangman. Kind of interesting. The wild unknown is the death card, and isn't that the truth? The wild unknown. I like that. Uh, alchemy, temperance, and that's another great title for a temperance. Uh, and they, he describes it as inner purification and opposites coming together. So that was, that was, that's a nice take on the temperance card. Here's the ens enslavement. Here's the devil. And I like enslavement. It's, it's almost, there's some keywords that they, instead of the titles, are using keywords in many ways. Moloch, and this is the, the, um, the tower card. I looked up Moloch because I had no idea what that was. And it's, it's, it's something about um, gods that would give uh, do children sacrifice, sacrifice their children or do uh, in rituals they would sacrifice children. So I'm not sure how this relates to the tower card, except it's it's you know equally distasteful. But um, so there it is. It's a beautiful image. The star, beautiful image. The moon, again. Very creative. The, I think these cards are beautiful. I really do. The sun with the little kitty cat and the beautiful sun, sundial. This is the New Deal. This is, uh, you know, very apropos of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt after, during the Depression. He made up the New Deal. Um, and it's, they, he, they define it as rebirth, uh, the new emerging from the old which that definitely a new deal was that. And then we have apothesis. I didn't know what apothesis was either, but it's um, theosis or theosis or theo is God and apotho is um, uh, the apex, reaching an apex, a God. I think it's, that's what it means. So it's kind of like wholeness and enli enlightenment. It's, it's the peak of something that's been achieved. And it's uh talks a lot about the divine with the theo in the uh, in the inside that word. It's a Greek word. Okay, so now we're going to go into the cards. Now, there um, 
there is Rider Waite uh, uh, homage to some extent, uh, but then there is, you know, something uh, creative license, and the meanings are sometimes a little a little different. But I am going to go with the ones. I mean, I have a, a, sheet, a sheet, a cheat sheet over here. I'm gonna maybe talk about a couple of the cards. So Ace of Water, the Two of Water, making a choice, the Three of Water. Uh, now this is uh, the Three of Water. Uh, in this deck, it refers to the convergence of renewal, of vital, of vital forces. So vital forces coming together and renewing. That's a little different than what we would mostly think of that. Um, the Four of Water, uh, head over heart. And I, thought, I thought that was really good, you know, when your head takes over your heart. The Five of Water, uh, he defines as self-indulgent. So the key words are kind of cool. They're very, uh, they're, they fit the nail on the head a lot of times. Six of water is, of course, the nostalgia card. The seven of water he defines as delusion, which is, it's, it's interesting because she's watching a movie and there's, you know, there's, it's a delusion. It's not real what she's seeing, what she's experiencing. The eight of water is a painful, alteration this nine of water was interesting um, there's this child with this shadow and it's it speaks about loving falling uh, accepting and loving your shadow self so that's very different than uh, a rider weight and then the ten of water happy family now he does have these interesting uh, uh, court cards, and he he gives the court cards each each court card. Um, put this over here. Uh, has its elemental meaning. So all the mayors our intellect, all the mayoresses, our heart, all the soldiers, our spirit, and all the couriers, or the pages, our messengers. Well, it says couriers there. So uh, that's how you would, you would know that they're, they're, they all have that element to it, and plus their suits come into play. So uh, here's the, the water. Mayor, mayoress, the soldier and the courier. Well, now we're going to the earth suit. These cards are very slippery. The ace of earth, the two of earth. Uh, you don't see the juggling there, but you could see the two orbs. The three of earth. The four of earth, the five of earth. He describes the six of earth as being guided. Um, he uses that term for also the six of air, so he kind of uses that more than once. Seven of earth, eight of earth fine-tuning his skills. The Nine of Earth with a little hedgehog, adorable. And the Ten of Earth, successful family. Then we have this uh, forlorn doll, or a teddy bear. Courier of Earth, soldier of Earth, mayoress of Earth, and mayor of Earth. Go into the air suit, and they're um, their feathers, air of suit, air of ace of air, two of air, three of air, traditional, four of air, five of air, six of air. Oh, and that's this is the one he 
referred to as being guided. Six of air. Seven of air. Eight of air. I think that's Houdini. Nine of air. And ten of air. So we do see a little a little blood here, and that's no a little little kind of a little transformation to be sure. The end of a cycle. Courier of air, soldier of air, and mayoress of air, along with the mayor. Now, what we're going to do here, just briefly, to just cover one one uh, set of court cards. I'm going to read from the book. Now, this this of course is the air suit. So he combines the elemental with the suit to def define the characters, to define the um, the court cards. And so the mayor of air is the intellectual mind, quite disinterested in practical matters, the sem semantic and theoretical king who hates being bothered by anything earthly. The mayoress of air, the detached heart, cold and aloof, unless you have something that she wants. Ooh. The soldier of air, the refined spirit, Pure, noble of character, careful not to get his hands dirty. And the messenger of air, the curious hand, bearing notion, notice of new opportunities for learning and self-betterment. So there you have a sample of one of the set, the courts for one suit. It's the air suit. And then we will have um, the fire suit. Ace of fire, two of fire. I like this two of fire. Uh, it talks about in the book. It's a choice, and you can see where he has the globe in one hand and the and the girl, the lady, in the other. So it's like, which way is going to go? Is he going to concentrate on his home life or go out into the, the world? Three of fire, four of fire, the great pictures. Five of fire. He talks about this being in conflict with yourself. The thing is, there's different, these aren't the same guy, so. Uh, six of fire. Seven of fire. And this, he refers to this uh, being defended by a fierce spirit. So you're, this is like a strength card almost, he has it. The Eight of Fire. One of the things that I, one of the other reasons why I cut down the deck, besides there were a couple of borders that were a different color, some of the cards, this one specifically, and there was one other one, the um, the picture went beyond the board, the this border. It was went into the border, and uh, that was odd to me. So then I cut this down and you know, do the outline on it, the border. So the Nine of Fire and the Ten of Fire. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's some right or weight thing going on here. I mean, a 10 is a completion. A 10, uh, it depends how you read it, but this is certainly not, a, this doesn't look like a completion. This looks like he's still struggling. I love this card, the Courier of Fire, the Soldier of Fire, the Mayoress of Fire, and the Mayor of Fire. So that's this deck. The Tinker's Damn Tarot. Um, I think it's quite impressive, actually. The book is really uh, interesting. It's a short little book, but it's really worth looking at. Again, uh, I did the, the the borders with a Krylon. They call it copper leaf pen. So it's it is it is paint, and it seems boy it seems to be lasting quite a long time. And again, this is the uh, Tinker Tarot from Duck Soup Productions, and you should check it out. Have a great day.